where, let, and const. Three ways we can declare variables in JavaScript. And there can be a ton of questions that can be made on this topic when it comes to interview. So where existed in JavaScript pretty much ever since it was created. And let and const were introduced in ES6 version of JavaScript to overcome some of the limitations of where. So when I was preparing for this video, I had a conversation with few interviewers. And they all told me that these type of questions are generally asked at the beginning of the interview and they decide how the interview will go forward. So let's say if the candidate failed to answer this question, this can change the flow of interview drastically. The interviewer can evaluate your JavaScript knowledge based on these questions. So in this video, I'll try to cover most types of questions that can be made on this topic. So the first type of question that can be asked is on scope. So I've opened HTML, CSS and JavaScript files over here. And when I run this, yep. So let's get back to our JavaScript file. So first of all, what is this thing called scope? So a scope is a certain region of a program where a defined variable exists and can be recognized. And beyond that, it cannot be recognized. So there can be multiple types of scopes. For example, global scope, block scope, functional scope. So for example, we are over here without any blocks or functions. So this is our global scope. If I create a function over here, this is our function scope. And if we create any other block over here, this will be our block scope. So when we talk about where, so if I write where a equals five. So this is in its global scope. So it can be accessed anywhere over here. So if I say console log a, if we go to browser, yep, you see five output over here. So where is functional scope, but let and const are block scoped. So let's see what that means. So if we create a block over here, and write where inside of it, you're gonna see that this is still accessible outside of this block. But when we change it to let, you're gonna see reference error A is not defined. So this is only accessible inside of this block. So if I move this inside of it, yep, you're gonna see we are able to access it. And same is with const. It's accessible inside of it, but when we take it outside, Nope, A is not defined. Now there's another concept that can be taken out of this scoping, which is called shadowing. So in JavaScript, the introduction of let and const in ES6 along with block scoping allows variable shadowing. So what is variable shadowing? If I write this code, you're gonna see, we have a variable over here called hello. And if we print this over here, it's gonna print hello. Yeah, that's fine. But if we have a block scope over here, inside of this, we say let A equals high, let's say. What do you think is going to happen? This A is going to shadow this A. This will overlap the value of this A, but still it's just going to be only accessible inside of this block. Outside of this block, the A will still be hello. So if I run this, you're gonna see. First, we get high from over here and then hello from over here. So this is called variable shadowing. Now, while shadowing a variable, it should not cross the boundary of scope. That is, we can shadow where variable by using let, but cannot do the opposite. So if we try to shadow let variable by where variable, it is known as illegal shadowing. And it gives us the error that variable is already defined. So let's check this out. Now you're gonna see, we, if we try to shadow where variable by using let, it's gonna work absolutely fine. But when we try to shadow let variable by using where, it's going to give us the error. So let's check this out. If I run this, you're gonna see B has been already declared. So this is called illegal shadowing. And sometimes all of these questions can be asked together by the interviewer as an extension to the scoping question. Now the next type of question can be on declaration, how these three can be declared. So if we try to say where A and then again say where A, then this is absolutely fine. It's not going to give us error. We can redeclare it as many times as we want. But when we say let A and let A again, you're going to see that gives us the error. A has already been declared. So we cannot redeclare a variable by using let. And when we use const, it's again going to give us the same error, but it's going giving us another error missing initializer in const declaration, which we are going to discuss in our next question. So let and const cannot be redeclared in the same scope. 
but where can be redeclared in the same scope but if we have something like this and we say let over here and we save this then this is completely fine which we already discussed that this comes under shadowing now the next type of question can be declaration without initialization so if i write where a and we declare it just like this then this is absolutely fine no problem we can declare it without providing it any value okay so but if we try to do it with let then also this is completely fine but if we do it with const then this will give us error that missing initializer in const declaration we need to provide const some value while declaring it so it cannot be declared without initializing it with any value all right pause if you're not yet following me on twitter go to twitter.com slash piyush underscore eon or click the link in the description down below and hit that follow button right now i'm waiting for you i'm still waiting okay fine let's continue with the video now just like declaration there can be questions on initializations as well so can we reinitialize these variables let's see so if we say where a equals 5 and we again try to say a equals 6 yep that's fine we can do that but what about let yep we can do that with let as well but can we do that with const nope we cannot do that with const assignment to a constant variable we get this error over here so where and let can be updated but const can never be updated if done this will give us this assignment to constant variable error now the next type of question that can be asked is on hoisting and this is a really really important topic 95 percent of javascript interviews definitely have a question on hoisting but before understanding hoisting let's understand how javascript execution context works so what happens is when we try to execute a js code there are two phases. One is a creation phase and the other is execution phase. So in creation phase, three things happen. First, it creates a global or a window object. So I'm gonna create a window object representation over here. Oh man, I'm so bad at drawing. The second step is it set up a memory heap for storing variables and function references. That means it takes all of the variables and functions and stores it inside of this window object. And the third step is that it initializes those functions and variable declarations with undefined. So let's say we have first variable as a. So we're gonna store a. Second is our function, which is multiply. So we stored multiply over here. And the third thing is our variable b. Now the third step is that it initializes them with undefined. And for the function declarations, it takes the whole complete function from here and stores it inside of our window object. And this is the exact reason why hosting occurs. I'm going to talk about hosting in just a minute, but let's understand what happens in the execution phase. So during the execution phase, the JavaScript engine executes the code line by line, assigning the values to variables and executes the function calls. Also for every new function created, JavaScript engine creates a new execution context altogether. We're going to talk about how function work with execution context in another video of this series. For this video, I'm going to focus on where, let, and const. So during the execution phase, JavaScript first assigns the value of a, which is 10. Then it moves on to variable b because the function multiply has not been executed yet. So it's not going to touch this function. Then it takes b and assigns it with this function execution. So it's going to execute the function with multiply x. So it's going to pass 10 to this and it's going to multiply it to provide it value 100. And then it's going to run this console log b, which is going to be the output of 100. Now JavaScript also uses something called call stack, which is a mechanism to keep track of all of the function calls, which we will discuss in our upcoming videos. So now you know how JavaScript execution context works. Let's move forward to hoisting. So during the creation phase, JavaScript engine moves your variables and function declarations to the top of your code. And this is known as hoisting. If I declare a variable called count, and if I try to console log it before it was declared, you're gonna see that we get undefined. We didn't get any error. It should have given us error, right? That the variable is not declared yet. But since we know how the JavaScript execution context works, it declares all of these variables and functions at the top of the code during the creation phase. And then when the execution happens, it checks if this variable already exists during the creation phase or not. So obviously it existed, so it gives us undefined. So how JavaScript looks at this code is, it looks at like this that yep where was already declared and then we are console logging this and then later we are initializing it 
Okay, so this was the case of where, right? But what happens in let? Let's change this to let. Are let variables hoisted as well? Well, if you console log this, you're gonna see this error and you're gonna say, nope, they are not hoisted. But you're wrong, they are hoisted. They are hoisted in temporal dead zone. We're gonna talk about that temporal dead zone in just a minute. But let's see what do we get over here. So we get cannot access count before initialization. So this basically helps us overcome the limitations of where. So where didn't warn us about the declaration. But since we are using let, it says that we cannot access the count before the initialization. Now, if we go over here in the sources and put a breakpoint over here, and when then we try to run this, you're gonna see that inside of the script, we have this count as undefined. Whereas if we let's try to declare another variable with var count to the two value. And if you go back and refresh this, you're gonna see in the global, we have this count two over here. So this is inside of our scope and this is undefined, so that's fine. But you're gonna see, we have a separate script over here which has this count variable, which is inside of the temporal dead zone. So temporal dead zone is the time between the declaration and the initialization of let and const variables. So let's understand hoisting by understanding this question which was asked to me in one of my previous interviews. So I've already made a video on this, so I'm gonna play that clip right over here. So interviewer gave me this function right here, function abc, and he asked what is going to be the console log of a. So I want you to think about this first before moving forward because we are using var over here to declare this variable. So what's gonna happen is when this function is initialized in our execution context, it's gonna hoist this variable a and the console log will be undefined. So let me show you real quick. If I say abc and run this, you're gonna see that we get undefined in the console. So, yep, you see, we get this undefined. Now, why is that? So if you go to sources and right over here in the script.js, I'm gonna put a breakpoint over here in the console log A. So now if I refresh the page, you're gonna see when the code reaches over here, A is undefined because it has initialized this function, but it has not initialized this variable yet. So this variable A is undefined at this moment. But if the console log was after this variable A, then obviously it would have printed the value of A, which, which is going to be 10. So now if I put another breakpoint over here and say move forward. Now you're gonna see A is 10 right over here. When this function ends, the A value of A will be 10. But since at this time the value of A was undefined, it's going to print undefined. Now then interviewer added few more variables inside of this function. Now then he asked me what is going to be the console log for all of these three values. So obviously we know for A it's going to be undefined, but for B and C, what is it going to be? Because const and let behave a little differently than where. Are these two variables going to be hosted as well? Yes, they are going to be hosted, but they are going to be hosted in temporal dead zone. So if I go back, and you're gonna see, we get this error, cannot access B before the initialization. So our constant let variables are not hoisted like var, but they are hoisted in the temporal dead zone. So if I go to sources, so now if I put a debugger over here, and let's say here as well, and refresh this, you're gonna see that we still get B and C undefined in our local scope but these doesn't work like exactly like where does. These both will be initialized in the temporal dead zone. So what is temporal dead zone you ask? So temporal dead zone is the term to describe the state where variables are in the scope, but they are not yet declared. Just like over here, they are in the scope, but they have not been declared yet. So that's why B and C are going to be in the temporal dead zone. So yep, these were some of the major types of questions that can be asked to us during these JavaScript interviews. Now obviously there can be more types of questions that can be framed by using let, var and const. Do mention them in the comments down below so that others can know and I can make a video on them in future. So if you like this first video of our JavaScript interview series, give this video a huge fat thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more such awesome videos and let me know in the comments down below which topic would you like for me to cover next.